This is BBC Radio Sheffield. Now, we're going to talk about this next. Two, four, six, eight. <laughs> What a scene outside Sheffield Town Hall yesterday as dancers from the club Spearmint Rhino, along with fellow supporters, marched through the city, fighting for the club to stay open. The licence is up for renewal, as it is every year. But this time, the decision by Sheffield City Council has been delayed whilst it investigates allegations of breaches of licence rules. It comes after a campaign group sent in private investigators to the club. Now, the club does say that it takes these breaches very seriously and it's investigating to see if they took place. Here's what two workers from the club had to say about it. They paid private investigators to come in and film us naked. It's like, what on earth? That is, it's it really crazy. Make sense. I don't know how you. I don't know how they think this would not be distressing to people at all. Like some people do this job to fund other things, and they don't necessarily want families and things to know. And this could all. This has really upset a lot of the girls, and I think these women need to realise how much they have actually mentally affected a lot of us. But then again, they wouldn't even care. They don't care about us. They don't see us as people or humans. They don't value our job so they're probably not they're probably laughing at us we've but a, yeah and we've actually um so many of us have reached out and tried to speak to them just so we can you know get our point across we're not forced into doing this we're doing this out of choice we're very strong intellectual um women that uh, are independent and are doing something completely out of choice and for them to like like ella said um say that they're supporting us and they want to help us and then to do that is really below the belt, underhanded and uh, a total violation of our privacy and our rights. So, should a club like this be in Sheffield City Centre? Lisa Markham is here from Zero Option Sheffield. Should it be in the City Centre, Lisa? I, well, I don't think it should be in Sheffield at all. Uh -huh. And indeed, the long-term goal of uh, Zero Option is to ensure that there are no lap dancing clubs anywhere because of the impact on all women and indeed on the wider community. But that was a very powerful piece from, mm. from those women. And, and I would want to say it's quite clear, and we've always known that and accept that, that these are strong women, resilient women, imaginative women, creative women. The, there is no issue about rescuing women who don't know what they're doing. The, question, the issue is about the choices that women make to work in an industry that supports the ongoing objectification of women. And as for the point of attempts being made by workers in Spearmint Rhino to reach out to us, I'm not sure who that us is. I know that there have been a number of comments on social media uh, about trying to make contact, but that's not really a kind of an appropriate way of making contact, particularly in the context of an ongoing investigation which is being discussed publicly, I think, by some some uh, allied with Spearmint Rhino and, and supporters. Let's but talk about the investigation. Did, did you send private investigators in to film them? <laughs> Zero Option did not send private did, investigators did, did in Did private investigators go in and film them? I, I, I know that there was a, a, an investigation uh, carried out by um, former police officers, experienced police officers, it, it, the, all, people have all sorts of imaginings about what an undercover investigation is. Um, part of the difficulty is that it's extremely difficult to obtain information that's that's factual, that's corroborated, that says something about the state of play in terms of adherence to conditions in lap dancing clubs. And uh, Spearmint Rhino and, and similar enterprises will say that we have rules and regulations, we always abide by the rules and regulations and the clubs are safe. There's been lots of information, lots of testimony from current and former dancers and performers and indeed other staff w that would suggest... Sorry, did somebody that go and film them? That would suggest, if I just finished, Toby, well, that no, would I'm suggest sorry, that did, regulations are being... Did written. somebody go and film them? Well, it is a matter of public record. This has been talked about in council. This has been talked about in newspaper articles. This has been talked about in newspaper articles. Well, I didn't know. I'm asking you the is, question. Okay, well, I, I, it's a good question to answer. Lots of people have been talking about, about video it, information. I am answering it, and I'm giving you a context, which is really, really important. Well, just, Zero option has not done that, right. but I am aware that information is, has been obtained <laughs> through site visits and through um, recorded information. And that has been shared, as I understand, with the appropriate authorities. So who would have given those people permission to film? Well, I think, uh, as, as you will know, and I hope I hope uh, the, the, the sassy women that we've been hearing from know this, that there are uh, p p 
there are lawful reasons on occasions to obtain information which allows for the investigation of crime or, or breach so of regulations. So who gave the permission in to film anybody? Well, I, are you asking me who, who initiated the inquiry? Yeah. Are, you, are, you ask, are you asking Did, were me... Were they given permission to film people? Um, well, in, in a private my, establishment, my, my naked. understanding, my understanding of, of law and regulation is that it's not is not it's not necessary to, to obtain consent in the context of an investigation that is about breaches of regulation and law. It's it's very uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable film for all of us. Them. Well. Uh, what I want to say that's is that it is, it that is, is appalling. You well, can't film naked people without point, asking them. That's the point of view. Let's go on to these women that uh, you've filmed. No, I'm going, I'm going to finish. I haven't filmed anybody. No, okay, Zero option filmed. hasn't fi filmed anybody. I am, I am absolutely, frankly appalled at the allegations of dis the distribution of revenge porn that are being uh, shared around the networks and I know that the women have talked about that yeah. and I, I appreciate the women are talking here, the, I think that was a clip this morning, the women are talking about their feelings about that, the impact on their, on their mental health. I get that and I get that if you're in the middle of an investigation which may include what a way to treat some your women. information Let's about breaches about of licensing regulations okay. and indeed that, but that's I, up to the I'm council, not at liberty. That's I, up to the council that's not your job. Well, Why have you got an opinion on how somebody else earns a living? Well, I think we all have opinions about all sorts of things. Right, and so why is it and important? My, my opinion and that of zero option is, is, is based on a respect and value of, of women. And I would pose a, a question back to you mm. and, and, to the, and to the women. If we were in the same room and if mm. we weren't in the middle of an investigation, we would be having those conversations direct, I guess. I would pose the question, what is it that means that women who are students, women who need to pay for, 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 for setting up a business, what is it in our society that means that women have to work in what the women themselves have described as sex work in order to do that? They don't. What is it about fairness and equality that, that says there isn't another option for women to there is make another that option. money? Okay. They just don't want to take it. That's okay. what they want to do for a living. Well, I, I, I obviously don't uh, agree with that, and I would want. Well, we've to, just heard them say. Well, well, that of course those women are entitled to that choice, but this, this is there is also an issue here about the wider implications of 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 of, of this this form of work, and I did hear a clip this morning, which in which it was in, in implied. I think it was actually explicitly stated by a woman who said that campaigners haven't looked at the bigger picture, and I think it's precisely because we've looked at the bigger picture that we are saying in the longer term we need to work towards eliminating establishments where women are objectified i understand but, that, but in there none of these other things are, you, the other things that you in, worry in about where is there in, in in lap dancing clubs they are there are rules if they're not sticking uh, to those rules my, they need to they need to be enforced. My, point, my well my point is and i have been trying to understand that i've been saying that and i'm very careful about the fact there's an ongoing investigation and actually we should not be commenting on in detail on it what, what, but as a general point i would say the whole the whole the whole point is that it would appear, and I haven't. I am not the adjudicator on this matter. It would appear that rules and regulations are being broken, and indeed there is other research that suggests that rules and regulations are being broken on a regular basis. And it may even be that in order to make the money that that women are aiming for, there are there are there are some women who are breaking the rules in order to make that money. There's the whole issue of, of private rooms and and extra extra services on offer. I want to make it absolutely clear that in the context in which Spearmint Rhino and similar clubs operate, it would be pretty difficult to imagine that rules were never bro broken. The whole setup of the, of the business model, the way it's run, and, 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 and the kind of challenges around ensuring that you make enough money, it means that women will have to break the rules. The management... You don't know that. You can't know that. Well, there is. If they're well, telling you that they're not. Well, I can know that. I can. Lying? I, I, no, no, that lying? no. I, I would never. I, I would never accuse any other woman of lying. What I would say is, we we have talked to other women who are both in the industry and have exited. We have looked at the research that there is around, and we know. We know that rules are being broken systematically. We're not saying we we couldn't possibly say because n I I'm not in there every day and. And I have been in, I have been in, and I saw nothing of concern on that particular day. But the reality is that there is plenty of evidence, corroborated 
let, let's let's use the word information because evidence is a very loaded word and actually when licensing decisions are made it is not necessary to meet the same same threshold of evidence it's important to deal with information that's presented fairly and squarely but there's lots of information that indicates that rules and particularly rules about no sexual contact are being broken on a regular basis it's part of the industry model well, that's, a, that's a, a council failing then isn't it well, I'm, I'm, I'm re- I, I am reluctant. I am reluctant to say a, a, a anything about a council which is currently in the middle of a of a of a financial of a financial difficulty. So there is a cost to regulating and investigating these matters. But I understand that they are still investigating these matters, and that will be taking quite a lot of time and energy. And one hopes <coughs> this is being done uh, professionally and and with great attention to detail. I I I have been the subject of workplace investigation myself, so I understand that it is. It's hugely pressurising for women involved and, and for staff involved, but it is a process that has to be followed. And campaigners are not doing, being, uh, you know, part of this process in order to make a point. We're not taking a, a kind of sensationalist position on this. Information has been received and information has been passed on. I have some understanding of the nature of the information. I don't have all of the details. But some people would have to say to you, what's it got to do with you? You don't go in there. You don't use the place. Well, People are using well, it to happy. The, the people who work there are happy. Yeah. What's it got to do with well, you? Well, I, I mean, so the two things I would say about that. I, I heard uh, um, s- someone talking yesterday, and I think it was a Radio 5 Live interview, about um, having been sexually abused and then being comfortable about working in, in sex trade I, I've worked with survivors and indeed perpetrators of sexual violence for all of my professional life I've worked with a lot of people who have experienced sexual abuse some of whom have been involved in sex work at some stage or other from that sample which is a big number I don't know anybody who's been happy about working in the sex industry we have local campaigners who have had experience of sexual grooming sexual violence and working in 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 in, in sexual entertainment venues i.e lap dancing club I have met no one who has been happy I have met people who have made pragmatic choices to to work in, in for example, in lap dancing clubs and subsequently, I suppose, come to a realisation that that was not probably harmful, although it, uh, that was probably not helpful to them, but served a purpose at the time. I have met um, people who have said, I knew nothing else other than to make money by going into this sort of work. And that's about choices and aspirations for all women. The other issue, why, the other question you, you, you asked me about, why should I be concerned? I'm a citizen. I'm concerned about women. I'm concerned about violence against women. I'm concerned about women's access to good employment, to safe spaces right across the board. The women will say that what, what, what they do inside has no bearing on what happens outside. I just don't agree with that. If there was some, some information that correlated with the rise in, in SEV clubs, in lap dancing clubs, that suggested that sexual violence and sexual harassment, street harassment and domestic violence had decreased, I would be saying, well, let's look and see if in some way sexual entertainment vi- uh, venues have helped to reduce that violent, that violence. They haven't. What happens in the sexual entertainment venue? you kind of normalizes the objectification of women and the objectification of women is part of the whole sequence of attitudes and beliefs that leads to ongoing violence and discrimination against women that's why i'm concerned i'm concerned about all women including women who work in those establishments in fact there was a recent post which i thought was really really interesting in the middle of an investigation i assume it wasn't a false post a woman who has worked and may indeed be still working in that dancing club talked about sexism and sexual harassment being rife in the club and actually suggested that this was also carried out by staff so we believe that we assume it was that was put up in good faith and that would that would be consistent with what with what many other women have said we about should... their experience of working sexual entertainment venues. but my final point is i support those women and in different circumstances I support their right to organise. I, I am glad they were out on the streets making their point. I am glad that we're hearing from them about their, uh, about their views and about their, their, their sense of, of autonomy. I just don't agree with the, the, the choice. And, and, I, and I think as women, we should be li- looking at different ways of exercising those choices. We should be speaking to the uh, women's officer from Sheffield Hallam University and a dancer at uh, quarter past eight. The women, uh, yeah, well, I'd like to make a comment about that. And, and, and one of the comments was about, was, is about the reference made to... to 
to women and 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 previous sexual abuse and the possibility that 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 uh, uh, sexualized dancing sexualized performance in a in a strip club is empowering it may be for a very small number of women i i i heard from a lot of women who'd experienced sexual abuse yesterday and there, there was a, there was a, my, my thoughts were there's a lack of understanding about the, on, the ongoing impacts of sexual abuse. It shouldn't define women. There are lots of women who, are, who have experienced sexual abuse in childhood. It shouldn't define us. It shouldn't define and dictate the rest of the rest of our lives. I have experienced sexual abuse, and for the first two years of my university life, I was offered money by men to have sex with them. Why? Because I thought the only way to be as a woman having three different sets of sexual abuse experience was to make myself sexually available to men that's not that's not how it wasn't helpful for me and it's not helpful for lots and lots of women and i was concerned about all of the students i talked to who have experienced sexual abuse including one who had gone to work in a, in a in a in a lap dancing club after a rape and found it as a way of empowering yourself and found it terribly distressing and damaging we'll speak to those in quarter past eight lisa markham thank you very much indeed for coming in this morning Lots of texts coming in on um, that show we had with Lisa Markham there. Um, why is the, this lady more bothered about these strip clubs and not saunas that are all over Attercliffe, says this here? Personally, I think they're far worse than Spearmint Rhino. Johnny Eckington says, whether you agree with Spearmint Rhino or not, uh, filming naked women without permission is just not acceptable, says John. <clears throat> I find that really odd, filming people without the permission when they're, when they're naked. Also... I'm assuming that customers were filmed who would have expected a right to privacy, wouldn't they? Um, I don't go to adult clubs, says this one here, but I'm on the dancer's side on this one. What's it got to do with anybody else? How girls make their living? There is nothing derogatory going on as the industry is very well regulated. I'm not sure that's the case, John. I wouldn't be surprised to find that rules were, as Lisa said, being broken. You know, people will take the opportunity, I'm sure. To earn a few extra quid, and you know, that's where licensing comes in, isn't it? Who's filming who, says Catin Healy. I'm a strong feminist, but I've got worse things to worry about than people making an honest living. And Adal says that lady in the studio needs to mind her own business. Of course, she would say it is her business, because, you know, this is not, as far as she's concerned, and I understand this, this is not divorced from the rest of society. Uh, Kim's on the line in Barnsley. Morning, Kim. Good morning. What we're talking about, Kim, is it spearmint right now? Um, well, just general, I think. Just general um, sort of lap dancing clubs, really. Yep. So I just think, um, you know, the dancers have a right to work there. And I think that protesting against them is going to potentially put a lot of people's jobs at risk. I think that's undoubtedly right. But I think also that what people would say is that, you know, there are some things that are just worth losing. And uh, certainly, I think the point that uh, Lisa was making earlier on is that you know, th these clubs are part of wider society where we do know that women are objectified and we do know that women are assaulted. And, and maybe this is getting rid of them is just a, a beginning a, a, of making that better. I, I don't think I agree, to be honest. I think, I mean, there is obviously, I'm, I'm completely against any violence against anyone, not just women. I think violence in general, I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't see the problem with the woman choosing to work in a lap dancing club because there are regulations there, they're protected, they're safe. Unfortunately, I don't think we're ever going to stop um, women, you know, if they're in a club, if they're going to get extra money by doing other things, I don't particularly agree with that. But if they're choosing to do it in a safe environment, then it's never going to stop, really, is it? So, um, I have to say, I was speaking to a dancer after quarter past eight this morning, and there is absolutely, I'm sure she'll tell me she's never done anything like that, and it's a completely yeah. different job. You know, they, they, mm -hmm. I'm sure the dancers would tell you they just dance. There are plenty of places. Yeah, of course. Yeah, can go if they want to do something else. Yeah, I think another. I think someone texted in to point out about Attercliffe, and that's, I used to work around Attercliffe, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of problems around there. Maybe that's what people should be focusing on, not women. A lot of these dancers are single mums who've got children to provide for. If they if they have got the figure and they are going to earn money by sort of using it, not in a sexual way, dancing isn't sexual. You know, they're doing it. They're the ones. I think a lot of people worry that women are being exploited, but in a way, they're exploiting the men and the, the earning money it's their choice and it is all about choice at the end of the day so it's a bit i mean the thing you said there though isn't it? if they've got the figure it is a bit there's something about it that's not quite right isn't it because yeah may, maybe but i think as i said for me 
I think it's about the the choice of the woman that it's mm. it's it's feminism, and I think to to stop a woman doing what she enjoys doing. Is, is wrong, I think. So. Kim, thank you very much indeed. That's Kim in Barnes, and that's what she thinks. I'm really struggling with this one, because I have, said before we came on, I have genuinely no idea what it, And every single argument I hear for, and every single argument I hear against, convinces me. Because why on earth would you want to do anything that's going to make the world the worst place for your daughters to grow up in? On the same, by the same token, why remove choice? I, I genuinely... Every single argument convinces me until I hear the next one. I'm going to go over to David in High Green. Morning, David. Good morning, uh, Toby. How are you? I'm well. How are you, David? I'm fine, thank you very much. What are we talking uh, well, about this morning? No problem. Well, it was just the topic that you've been covering regarding the uh, Spearmint Rhino. And obviously, I recognise uh, both sides of the, the fence for people. The girls they want to have the choice to work. And then people considering their rights and that they're being objectified. Just moving the if we look towards banning this type of thing, what's the next stage about people taking control of people's lives? What about banning boxing? At the end of the day, it's a violent sport. We're encouraging people to go out there and uh, basically potentially maim and even kill each other purely for entertainment. Uh, the next stage would, that would be is we've also had crowds fighting amongst each other as a result of. Uh, Rival uh, artist bounce, uh, bounce taking place. Would that be the future next ban? ban well, there, are, <clears throat> there are people who want to ban boxing. There are people who campaign to ban boxing, including some fairly prominent doctors. Well, yeah. So, the, so it's that there. So, at what point do we sort of start taking charge of people's lives and almost a nanny state and taking over from them because they don't know well enough uh, or claiming that people don't well enough? So, really, I only just wanted to drop that yeah, one in. I've been yeah. listening to one side of the argument. Well, joining us in the studio now is Ella Smith, who works at Spearmint Rhino, and Gabby Willis, the women's officer at Sheffield Hallam University Students' Union. And Gabby, I think that people might be surprised that you're here. People might think that this is not particularly a feminist issue, really, going out and being a stripper. Yeah, it's a question that I've been asked a lot recently, kind of, is this really a feminist issue? And the answer is completely yes. And I think that really, kind of, in modern feminism, we've moved along a lot from just kind of getting the votes for women and now it's women can do what they want it's it's women's bodies women's choice um, and if a woman wants to work in a strip club then absolutely she can work in a strip club women can be in charge of their own sexuality and their own bodies um, and it's completely their right I understand that um, <clears throat> I also understand though what the zero option party is saying is that, that it has an impact I'm perfectly allowed to smoke but if I if I stand here and just blow it in your face all the time that's impacting you yeah um I, I can get why they say that, but I think that they're missing a lot of really crucial points. Obviously, street harassment and violence against women is a massive problem, and we're working against that too. Um, it's a huge passion of mine to, to try and combat that. But I don't think that Spearmint Rhino Compliment or clubs kind of contribute to it in any way. The women who work there choose to put themselves in sexualized situations. It's completely different to a woman going out just minding her own business about town and getting catcalled or something. Um, so... I think it's it's a really nuanced debate that they're not looking at properly, really. Well, let's talk to Ella. Ella, you work at uh, Spearmint Rhino. What do you do? Uh, I'm a dancer there. You're a dancer. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? A year and a half. Why did you decide to do that? Um, I wanted to earn extra money while studying at university because the funds that you get like, off the government were just not cutting it for me. Yeah. And, and is it good money? Um, it can be, yeah, you have like good days, bad days, but we're all self-employed, so your own motivation is basically what you want, you get out what you put in. Now let's talk about the atmosphere that you work in. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not been in Spearmints for about, it went up for sale at one point and when we looked at 10 years ago or something, but anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, there was talk of it. Um, so I don't really know what it's like in there. What's the atmosphere like? Um, it's literally the friendliest place ever. We're actually renowned for being one of the friendliest strip clubs. That's actually on the internet. All the girls are so lovely. We have people coming in year by year for like events such as like um, the darts and things like that. And the customers actually say to us, we don't even come down just for the, like, the sporting event. We actually look forward to coming in and seeing the girls because you are all so friendly here. You're so welcome in. They never feel judged like they do in some places. They don't feel like the girls just jump on them as soon as they walk in. We like to have a conversation with them. A lot of people say coming in actually helps them and they come in when they're in a time of need for someone to talk to because they know they can come in towards they won't be judged by anything. And who are the people that come in? 
Oh, you get a variety of people. You get people from like obviously you got you get female customers. We get older customers, younger customers. You literally get anyone that you could think of that walks through the door. I've been in to see Ella at work, and honestly, it felt so so safe, and everything was so friendly. Can it be though? Because I mean, you're in a very compromised situation. You're naked in front of a bloke, mainly or normally a bloke when, that you don't know. When, we're not naked initially, we've got yeah. underwear on, and you build a connection with a customer, it's not just like, oh, you come in to see me naked, like, they, most customers come in for a chat and to talk to someone, um, which I think is actually really nice for us, because people come in because they they want to talk to someone, they feel like they can't go anywhere else, so you actually build up quite a connection with a lot of the customers that do come in. Bear in mind, it's 22 minutes past eight, uh, it's the school run time, do people ever ask you for things that they shouldn't ask you for? Not really, and if they do, you literally alert a security guard straight away. The person doesn't even have to do anything. It, they can literally say something that you are not comfortable with, security will be straight over and out they go. Have you ever been made to feel uncomfortable? Has anybody mm. touched you, have you? No, never. I've never felt uncomfortable in work because the security is so uptight that um, we are also, as a workplace, it's all so close-knit that you can look at someone and be like, I need you, and the security guard straight over, the person's out straight away. What do you make then, uh, Gabby, if you will, to talk to what the campaigners are saying in that? I mean, there's a clear history when I was talking to Lisa. She's got clearly got a long history of working with vulnerable people, people who have been abused, people who've been through all kinds of sexual violence and, you know, a, a long and varied career of it by the sounds of it. Her opinion has to have a, has to have a basis in fact, doesn't it? She, she, there must be some connection. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't connect strip clubs to... To saying that they cause sexual violence, um, or that anybody kind of going through it has been through it. I think, I think if anything, I'm a survivor of sexual abuse myself, and I've talked about it on the BBC multiple times before. Um, and I think that if anything, that's given me more of an appreciation of why women need sexual liberation and why it is important to have things like. Does does this jobs. liberate women though? Because I'm, I'm not even going to read out all the texts that say, "Well, if I had that kind of body, I'd have done it." Does it liberate women, or does it does it actually point to some other women and go, well, you don't look like those girls? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. In work, we have literally girls of every shape and size, and everyone is so appreciative, and it actually makes you appreciate different body shapes, different body sizes. And I wouldn't ever say anyone's a bit like, oh no, you can't work here. Like, there's a, such a variety of people in there. All it's the actually amazing. Say how it's increased their body confidence and, and how happy they are and like how it's made them feel better about their body there's different ages different people who've had children people who have disabilities do it it's it's a massive thing for anyone let's talk about your position at the university of course because you work at Sheffield Hallam University well, you're the women's officer at Sheffield Hallam University yeah. uh, the hubs is just there next to Spearmint Rhino mm -hmm. I've got a daughter that's going to be 18 in two years time I'm going to be dropping her off at a university hopefully I hope she comes to Hallam if she gets clever <laughs> uh, am I going to feel comfortable dropping her off next to Spearmint Rhino well, I'd, uh, the thing is, Spearmint Rhino, they're not open until 10 o'clock at night. We're also of the not allowed to advertise during the day because of like feminist groups such as not buying it. So you, you literally walk past the club and it looks like a big empty building. You can't even tell it's there. And at, at the Students' Union, we are completely, we have a, I got this introduced in November, a sex workers' rights policy. We fight for the rights of, of women to do whatever they want. Um, so the university using us and students um, as their reason for wanting the club closed down is a completely moot point. Um, they're just trying to kind of do it for their own advances because they want the space to expand the campus. Mm. Um, and that's not in line with what students want and what students have voted for and what students have decided. Um, so... Um, but that, I mean, that, that the hub's there. That, that can close quite late at night, can't it? I'm assuming... I, I think the latest I, I, that we ever shot really is 11. And but that's, the club's open. The club's there open, is, but it doesn't there get There is security guards stood outside yeah. at all times, so if there was any, ever any trouble, they would be there to witness it firsthand, and they've like helped people before that maybe, I don't know, but they're always there. So There's there, more security there, it's, there than at like, yeah. clubs in town. Mm. Are you completely happy with this? If your sister, your, your, your brother, your, your, your mum said, this is what I now do for a living, would you be completely happy with this? Yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah. why not? It's an interesting point. What, what would you say to, then to the protesters? I mean, I spoke to Lisa earlier on. I've spoken to lots of the protesters over the time, and my <clears throat> my uh, belief in their commitment to their cause is I, I think they are absolutely committed to it. Um, what would you say to them? Why are they wrong? 
I wouldn't really say an opinion that like they have their opinion. Obviously, we have our opinion, so it's we can't really say their opinion is wrong. But I would say to them, it, it would be nice of you to talk to us dancers that currently work there. They have absolutely refused to have any conversation with us about our views on the place. They kind of focus on the negatives and the people that leave. I am completely agree. Some people come into the industry and it's not for them and it wasn't right and they leave and they need support in place for that. I completely understand that and I'm for putting support in place for those people. But but you can't ignore the other half. We also need support in doing a job that we want to do. Because of these people, a lot of us now feel unsafe in work because of what they've done and things that they're doing, and it's those that are making us feel unsafe. How did you come into the work? Did you think a year before I wouldn't mind being a dancer? I just, I used to dance, like, when I was younger, not this kind of dancing, and I literally randomly thought one day, do you know what? I'd like to give that a go. What was it like the first night? It was... Actually, it was, I was nervous at first because obviously I've never done it before, but the girls were so nice that you just fit in straight away and now it's like a second home to me. I love being there. And it must feel strange though. Something. I mean, you know, it's just an odd thing. It's something we're not used to being naked in front of somebody we don't know. I would say I am completely like so comfortable with being naked in front of people that I don't know now and this job's given me that it's given me the confidence to love the body that I'm in and everybody has parts of the body that they hate and anything but people come in there and they appreciate you and the female form so much that it boosts your confidence so much through the roof so why really shouldn't great. we be naked and be happy with our bodies as well I mean I've been on the naked podcast with um Kat and mm. Jen um and I think it's really important that we have things like that um and it's important that we kind of see people's bodies so that we can know what bodies are really like. Yeah, but that's not why anybody's going to experiment right now, are they? I mean, it's not a biology class. They're going in there because girls look good with the kids off and they're, and they're men who like looking at them. That's, well, that's true. It's, but it's, also like, it's not I educational, is it? It said it can be educational. Body I've learned a lot of things. Yeah. 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 So yeah. The girls who work there, they see each other's bodies and they realise that it's okay to have cellulite. It's okay to have stretch marks and curves. I mean, I went in there and I felt so positive about my body afterwards, even though I was a customer, because I'd seen women dancing with stretch marks on show, not just people who were airbrushed in magazines and stuff. Right, the phone today is going to be an interesting one. I have genuinely no opinion on this. Well, I have loads of opinions. That's the problem. They're all conflicting. Uh, Mickey Rawmarsh is texting, and I think this is interesting. I think this is interesting. He's texted. He says, I want to say the show's been brilliant today. Toby, he says, it's all, it's all about me. It's so refreshing to hear positive young women doing amazing things. From the referee to the women talking about stripping and best of all, the young girl who's making the garden at Arbathon. Keep up the good work, everyone. What an interesting point of view. Are they, are they equitable? I have often said about what I do at a weekend, and I don't know if I've said this is an opinion I've voiced in here. <clears throat> We're all strippers. The people who go out and work on a Friday and Saturday night and stand on stage telling you jokes that they've made up in their heads or playing you songs that they've written with their hands or taking their clothes off to show you their bodies that they've worked on during the week. We're all doing the same job. We're changing somebody else's night for money. It's what we do. And I equate it like that, really. It's a job. So, <clears throat> no matter how many seats you're selling as a, as a stand-up comedian, if you're Michael McIntyre doing the, the arena, and if you're, uh, if you're a lad doing, uh, doing a, um, you know, the back room of a pub, or you're, one of the, if you're Sarah Millican at the City Hall, don't matter, we're all doing the same job. And we're all doing the same job, as far as I can see, as singers, jugglers, strippers. Are you, though? Don't because know. what about the power dynamic? Because arguably... If you have a microphone and you're in front of a room full of people, you are the one with the power because you've got the ability to call those people out in the audience. If you're dancing as a stripper, where's the power? Arguably, you could say, well, it's the woman's choice to dance. Yes, she's chosen to be there and dance. But actually, in that dynamic, is it not the people paying for the dancers because you need them to pay extra to make more money? Mm -hmm. So is it actually a power dynamic? And in the comedy room everybody's clothed you're not being objectified for your body whereas is there an argument that in a strip club that's the power dynamic yep there is absolutely arguments for it which is why i say that's why i can't make it wrong. but you, the reason that you're laughing at comics all to the time they've got to where they've got through their internal problems 
A lot of the creativity that comes, I mean, the, believe me, put a psychiatrist in the dressing room. They're all mad. And some of them have had a really interesting trip towards getting to the stage, to the point that the only way they can get some stuff out of them, this isn't me, uh, is by standing on stage. You know, so, so, so you look at some people, I mean, crikey or blimey, when you used to watch Johnny Vegas, with what he would put himself through to get a laugh, I mean, he's brilliant, but you just think, whoa, calm down. Where does that need come from? Is it also, can, it, can you turn it around and say, equally, a man can stand on a stage in front of a group of people and make them laugh, and a woman can, and actually that's quite an equal place, whereas we don't have particularly male strip clubs. We don't have men that take their clothes off uh, for women. Not as much. I, Jenny and I interviewed some of the dancers for the male uh, dance troupe. Jimmy but Dance? Uh, no. One like Dream it. Boys. Yeah. Dream Boys. And it's interesting because we approached them and we said, because they take their clothes off on stage, but we asked them what it was like to be strippers and immediately they said, no, 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 we're not strippers. We are dancers who take our clothes off. And they see it very much like that. And they talked about, they, the crowd that comes to see them very much joins in. It's an entertainment show. Whereas he thinks there is a different dynamic when women are stripping for men. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure that's always the case, but I don't know. And this is the point, and this is why I think it could be a good phone in, because I don't know. So, I, I, and neither do you, because I, I, nobody can. can. Is there a definitive answer to this? What's he got to do with me, what she or he wants to do for a living? If she or he wants to make their living by taking the clothes off, what's he got to do with me? But then, of course, I do have some things, because I remember when me, my wife and I went to Amsterdam. Oh, this will be a bit cheeky, a bit, cardboard, a bit uh, postcard human, blah, blah, blah. What down the road like this? It was disgusting. Why? It just felt the seediest thing we've ever, ever seen. And believe me, we are not prudes. It was just seedy. It just didn't feel right. And I don't know that, you know, there is no right or wrong. It, morally for us, it didn't feel right. It felt exploit. It felt massively exploitative. But, you know, what, what, what's anybody else's morals got to do with me? And what's anybody else's morals got to do with you? So is it anybody else's business that someone wants to be a stripper? Uh, Lisa Markham, I spoke to earlier on, I'm guessing, would say it's not just a moral issue. She would say that sex work, for the authorities thus, uh, goes out into the wider community and has an effect. So it's not just about morals. But do you think that's true or not? What would you say if your, one of your daughters came home and said, I've decided to be a dancer in a strip club? I genuinely don't know. I can't think I'd be over the moon, if I'm honest. But I can't... I don't know. I can't think I'd stop them. Would I? I don't know. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, campaigners say that it promotes sexual violence and that it's in the wrong place. It's near a school and university. To be fair, Spearmint Rhino was there before the school was. Uh, Ella, a dancer, was in here. She told us she's never felt unsafe. 